Hello, this is our lecture 9 in functional analysis. Today's topic is Arcella Scoli theorem and compact operator. We start with Arcella Scoli theorem. So let's just simply formulate it and prove it. Theorem. Okay. So suppose x d d is a compact metric space and f a Banach space and consider the space I call this one E and by the definition it will be continuous functions from X to F we had this symbol before so the space and I can specify it of continuous functions from X to F with the norm and like we can write it down this will be infinity norm such that that will be supremum x belonging to x and that will be phi of x in the space f so what is f f of course is the okay as the function from c x f why can we have the following Sup Maybe, maybe, okay. Mm -hmm. Let, and I put here K, like I write it down, like a calligraphic thing, contained in X, F, so this is our space E. Mm. Maybe, maybe you should write it more consistent, it consists ways, it's a concise way, so this is. Let K be a set, be a set. Then we have two dots. K is compact if and only if if the following three conditions are satisfied. The following, the following, conditions are satisfied. And these conditions in our case are A. So first of all, we already know K is bounded. And closed. And the second one condition is B. For every x belonging to x, the set, and I put it like this, this set, I put it like this, k with sub index x, but that k is a little different and also with the sub index, so I think it won't cause any confusion. And this is a set of all phi of x such that phi belongs to k calligraphic is compact is compact and c the functions functions let's go a little lower from k are 
uniformly continuous. So maybe, uh, let's say, equi, sorry, we call it uniformly equicontinuous. Uniformly equicontinuous. And that will mean simply that for every epsilon larger than zero, there exists a delta larger than zero such that for every x and y belonging to x, if the distance between x and y smaller than delta, this will imply that for every phi belonging to k, the norm, and we know that the norm affinity, so this will be, so this will be, so in, this is the norm in the space A, f, so this will be f of x, phi, uh, sorry, phi of x minus phi of y smaller than epsilon, smaller than epsilon. So that's the, that's the formulation. So let me notice that if the space is the space f is replaced by the real numbers, then we don't need the condition b. So the condition b is not necessary. Yeah, simply that will be automatic. That's the Heine-Borel property. Actually, if you replace f by any finite dimensional space, that means, yes, you can... Uh, I, I, I forgot something. Of course, you have to let it down. Closure. Of course, closure. Closure. No, now it is correct. Yes. So, let's do the proof. And the first, we prove this direction. And so assume that K is compact uh, actually that's not really needed but it's okay. Just assume that K is compact. Maybe maybe I should remove it, yes, yes, yes. Yes, because we will be showing that if this is compact, then uh, no, I leave it like it is. So I leave it like a, I leave it like it is. It will be needed for the other, uh, for the uh, for the implication other way. So that 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 that's very good. So assume that, assume that. K is compact in E. Then clearly, then clearly, since this operator, since that one I put here pi x, and this will be from E to F, that's the operator, linear operator, which is defined on phi just by evaluating it at the point x is continuous we have that this set kx is actually equal pi x on the set k is also is also compact Compact. So in such a case, you, you take the closure. So that's exact. That's it. So we have here B satisfied. Of course, the condition A has to be satisfied. Every compact set is is bounded and closed. So we only need to check the condition, the condition C. The condition C. Did I write correctly? Condition C. Yes, condition C. So okay. So what do we want to do? Is to First of all, notice that K, since it is compact, it is, is totally bounded. Therefore, therefore, there exists a, for every epsilon, maybe like this, for every 
epsilon larger than zero, there exists there exists exists epsilon over three net. There exists epsilon over three net in K, namely namely we have here the set phi one phi two three dots phi capital N such that this is contained in K and for every phi belonging to K there exists a J belonging to belonging to one and satisfying the property that phi j minus phi infinity smaller than epsilon t. So that's that's our net. That's our net. So now we what do we need to do? Just simply notice. Notice. No, maybe notice already used. So since every continuous on the compact space X function is uniformly continuous mm -hmm. continuous yes we have that for every epsilon, so let me like this, for every epsilon larger than zero, okay, there also exists, so we start here, we should put this one, for every epsilon larger than zero, so we should basically start, maybe, maybe let's, let's, let's circle it like that. so maybe I don't need, so we have, we have this epsilon fixed, Therefore, let's say fixed, fixed. So now we have that there exists maybe, then there exists, have that there exists, there exists, exists delta larger than zero. And now we have the finite number of continuous functions which are uniformly continuous. So there exists a delta such that, and we have here such that for every x and y belonging to x, if the distance x and y smaller than delta, then this will imply then this will imply that the that the the the, the let's say like this uh, oh forget it for every j equals one two capital N, we have here norm of phi j x minus norm of phi j y smaller than epsilon 3. Consequently, we just pointed out that here we have exists, so that we show that the existence of delta. Consequently, we have the following. Let's say like this. For every, send me this, okay. For every, for every phi belonging to k, and that means this is for like, for every, so notice that this was like a big quantifier. Now we have exists j, phi j, so phi j belonging to the net, so that means j for some, for some j is equal 1 to n with the property, okay, sorry, with the property, and let me call this property star. So where is the property star? This is my property star. That one. Mm, no, 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 no. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes, yes.
this, this one, that one. This is my property star. Star. And the property star. So we can write for every x and for every y belonging to x if distance between x and y is smaller than delta then we have and phi of x minus phi of y so we have here chosen arbitrarily chosen phi that means this here remember is and then we write it down smaller or equal to phi of x minus phi j of x plus phi j of x minus phi j of y plus phi j of y minus phi of y and we can now write it down smaller equal and we are getting that here the condition star implies that this one is e is smaller than 3 of course 3 there is 3 as usual we have to adjust a little so this is epsilon 3 this is smaller than epsilon 3 in this one so let me write it down this will be epsilon over 3 plus epsilon over 3 plus epsilon equals epsilon and we prove the condition of uniform equicontinuity which which is here that one so we show the existed delta and we show that this implication is satisfied so let's go back to the proof and prove this particular direction so now we have conditions which are which are the now assume that uh, K satisfies A, B, and C, so it's, it's closed, it is bounded, and it is also C, so it is also uh, B is what it is. In, let's say the set, sets Kx are, are compact and C uniform equicontinuity. So let's, let's proceed. So we will show in order. So we will show, we will show that K is totally bounded. Bounded, and this will be enough to show, to prove that K is uh, is compact by because K is closed, and we are dealing with the Banach space, so it's complete. So that means it's totally bounded. Therefore, choose so okay, fix fix an arbitrary. epsilon larger than zero and since uh, and and by condition C we have that there exists a delta, so put it like this, there exists a delta larger than zero such that for every x and y belonging to x, if we put here x, dx, dy smaller than delta, then this implies that for every phi belonging to k, I have here phi uh, x minus phi y 
is smaller and I put here epsilon over 3 so now it is it is it is a uh, time to play with with the sign uh, with the epsilon over 3 in this condition the condition let's see I can do it so that will be my formula called one this is my formula one then and since x is and since x is compact and that's a metric space there exists in x a delta net and let's denote this delta net x1 x2 xm which is contained in x so delta net means that again for every x belonging to x there exists an xi belonging to this net such that the distance between between x and xi is smaller than delta so just reminding this particular property if it is there so now of course we also know that by condition B, we also have that the set the set mm -hmm, the sets the sets k x i which are let's write it down which are exactly the you put it like this phi of x i and here we have here phi belongs to the k and I take now I take the closure such that the sets are compact and that means I is it belongs so maybe put it like this equal one two up to capital M so we can define we defined a map and this map I denote by capital Phi that goes from from K and it goes to the set which is the product I is equal 1 to capital M of the sets K X I and and this map is given just simply by this formula so you take phi and you can you can you can you can de define it as a yes you can define it as simply as okay so this will be uh, so this will be just simply phi of x1 phi of x2 and this goes to the phi of x x m so this will be phi belongs to the k so of course we mentioned it before that the evaluation operator at any point is continuous so that means that phi is a continuous map and we also notice that notice so put here this set i denote just simply hmm, what is the symbol will be good one k is not good so maybe I, I okay i can write it capital k not this is not the set k k here this one is calligraphic so this is a calligraphic and this one is definitely like a bold put it like this bold i just don't want to use other other letters just to keep it like that so so, so moreover k as a product of compact set is compact compact here 
we use we use the the metric for in the product metric so we use the metric so call this metric like this so uh, maybe like this here we use the norm the norm in the space f times f times f the so this is m times times so this will be the maximum norm maximum norm in this space so you know how to write this maximum norm and and that makes this k the metric space and of course and of course we have the space is like is is compact cause so con so it is it is also totally bounded bounded since phi of k is a is a subset of capital of this bold k you see so the subset of totally bounded set is totally bounded is also totally bounded so there exists an epsilon over 3 net in phi over k and that means there exists there are the functions put it like this phi 1 phi 2 dot 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 phi capital N and they, this is all belonging in K satisfying and the, satis and the condition that it satisfies is that for every for every phi belonging to K there exists a J belonging to this set 1, 2 and N with the property that that maximum maximum and then you have here a uh, and this is the maximum over one second x belonging to x and here we have the norm phi and this will be of x minus phi j uh, is smaller and uh, not like this, not like this, uh, not like this, not like this. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, maximum j is not j. Too many indices. A equals to one to m, and then you take the norm phi of x, not j i minus phi j of x i smaller than epsilon. That's exactly this epsilon net. This is exactly this epsilon net. Okay. So we just showed that there exists a phi. And in particular, therefore, we also have that in this case, if, if, Let me if the under the so maybe not under the have under the above conditions under the above uh, conditions maybe you should not write this like that. Also we have the following we have that for every x belonging to x and for ev maybe start okay start that for ev every x belonging to x correct. We already have chosen arbitrary phi. So we have here for every phi. So I do not need to repeat this. So this will be, this phi is actually chosen. And for this phi I have j. So I can rewrite it down. So for every phi we have here uh, 
I don't need that, right? So this will be nor of phi, uh, and this will be x minus phi j of x. So now x is arbitrary. Here the condition is only for x, xi, but now I can rewrite it now and write it down like this. This is phi x minus phi xi, and this will be plus phi xi minus phi uh, j xi. Sorry, it's, 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 it's not fitting, so I have to squeeze it a little. Phi xi minus phi j xi, close it, and the last one is plus phi j xi minus phi x j x. So, this will be now my condition 2. So you have here condition 2, and you can see that condition, that the condition Where is my condition? One. Oh, here, the condition one, the condition one is, uh, one second, yes, yes, this is condition one. So in the condition one, we have here, if the x and y are close enough, and here, what do I have here? I have here that the distance between x and x i we can assume it's smaller than delta, so for everyone there exists an i such that the distance is smaller than delta. Then, of course, in this case, that expression is smaller than epsilon over 3. This expression is smaller than epsilon over 3. That's the, by condition 1. This is by condition 1. And by condition 2, this is also epsilon over 3. Which gives me, which gives me that this is smaller than epsilon over three plus epsilon over three plus epsilon over three, which means smaller than epsilon. We just constructed so 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 we just show show that for every epsilon larger than zero. There exists, there exists uh, mm -hmm, a set phi 1, phi 2, phi n contained in K, satisfying the property, satisfying the property that for every, uh, for every phi belonging to K, there is a j belonging to 1 over n with the property that norm phi minus norm phi j infinity smaller than epsilon. Smaller than epsilon, which is of course satisfied. Which is of course satisfied. Mm -hmm. Good. You can ask yourself why this equality Inequality is not changing to the weak inequality by compactness of x. By compactness of x. So we have that and therefore k is totally bounded. And we can finish the proof. So we're done and now we can go and we can continue the topic. The next topic is of course compact operators. So let's start like this. Let maybe just write definition. Definition. Let E and F be Two Banach spaces
and T is a bounded linear operator. Bounded linear operator. Then we say that then we say that T is a compact operator. If and only if the image of the unit ball, let's say like this, of unit ball is relatively compact, if and only if TB, and I put here maybe clearly E, closure is compact in F. So here, B, E is the closed unit ball. Satisfying this is X or equal to one. So that's the definition. Let's notice a couple of properties. So first one, mm, remark. Notice that the sum of two compact operators is a compact operator and if you multiply a compact moderator by a constant and and scaling means multiplying by constant a compact operator is again is also compact operator operator so the set of all compact operators and maybe put it like this k k E F in L E F is a linear space. It's a linear space. It's a linear space. So, so that's how we will denote the compact operator. So maybe an example. Uh, an operator and I put here again T belonging to L E F is called a finite dimensional operator If the image of T has dimensions smaller than infinity, it's a finite dimensional subspace, then clearly by Heine-Borel theorem, T is a compact operator. So we have here that there exists definitely compact operators. So there are many more examples. Maybe it will be possible to, disc to discuss such examples like uh, on, on the office hours meeting. Maybe I think for sure we'll talk about a couple of other compact operators. Uh, yes, so maybe it is appropriate to Let's say to show one more property of the 
So put it like this proposition. Proposition. So let again E and F be Banach spaces. Spaces. Ten. The space of compact operators E F is a closed subspace of L E F and no problem, let's prove it quickly. Proof proof and uh, Let's do it, okay. So, suppose we have here a sequence of Tn which is belonging to K EF, so that's a sequence B such that Tn is convergent in the norm to T to T. We need to show so we need to show that this is closed subspace, so to show that T indeed belongs to belongs to K E F as well. That means that this is also compact operator or compact operator. So so what do we need to show? Okay, we will show it. Notice that this is sufficient to so notice that T B E is compact, is compact, is compact if and only if T B E is totally bounded. Then, so assume, so we need to show, so we need to show that for every, for every epsilon larger than zero, there exists an epsilon net and I put here like this y1 y2 yn call this one net n in T B E okay now by convergence of sequence Tn to T, we also have that that for every epsilon larger than zero there exists an n such maybe k put here k I don't want to use the same symbols such that for every n larger or equal than n, uh, we have here that the norm of Tn minus T is smaller, and I put here epsilon over 2, why not? Epsilon over 2, smaller than epsilon i, and this is the norm operator, operator norm. So call this one condition 1, and, and fix n larger equal to n, so by compactness, by, okay, maybe, so since Tn is also compact operator, a compact operator, a compact operator, we have there exists an epsilon net, epsilon over 2 net, net in, 
in, in let's say, Tn of this B E, and in other words, we have here the Tn of B E is contained in, okay, I, I didn't specify it. what is the, okay, sorry, 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 net, I have, I have to specify this net, that's exactly the net that I'm looking for also, y1, yk, in tn of b, e, uh, there exists a sign, eh? mm -hmm. that means in particular, that means in particular that T N B E is contained in the union of I is equal one to K and this is epsilon over two ball center at the point Y I. And that one of course you can write it down. So let's denote this set simply like this is my finite set N or okay maybe F finite set. So this is maybe F was already used. Okay, N is good. And this is finite set N, so we can rewrite it. And we can notice the following that actually here that means nothing else than this will be nothing else than you can write it down. This is B epsilon to zero and plus and I put here the N, the set N, that's clear. This is the set N because any ball, any ball, so write it down, ball epsilon over 2yi can be written as yi plus b epsilon over 2 zero. So all of this go here and we and we have this union. So this is my number two relation. Therefore Therefore, we have here that, that, let's put it like this, T of B, E, mm, do I have space? Yes, I still have space. Is contained by the condition one. So this by condition one. So we have that guy. One. That this is contained in the epsilon neighborhood. So put it like this, epsilon over two neighborhood of the Tn of B, right, that's exactly, every point from Tn, so every point from T is a distance smaller than epsilon over 2 here, so that implies E, and that implies that I can rewrite this again, so that one is equal to B epsilon over 2 Z, epsilon over 2, 0, plus T, N, B, E, and then that one, we showed it by the condition number 2, is already, this is B, Epsilon 2, 0, plus B, Epsilon 2, 0, plus N, which is equal B, Epsilon 0, plus N, and that one is exactly J, sorry, I is equal 1 to N, and this is B epsilon, this is epsilon at YI, so Y1, Y2, YK, this is K, K, K is N epsilon net in, okay. T, B, E, oh. and that is, and that is actually the end. So, okay, so we got that one. So we can now uh, add one more important result, and this will finish this segment. So the, the one more important result is theorem. And this is uh, this is called the Schauder. Just let's just call it the Schauder theorem. 
uh, let E F B two banner spaces. Then we have and we have here like this that T belongs to the compact operators from E and this goes to the E to the F if and only if T star belongs to the compact operators from F star to E star. So, proof. So let's write it down. So we go in that direction and we need to show that in this case T star and now of course we have here this ball unit ball in F star is just simply is totally bounded. Totally. bounded. That means in particular for every sequence We'll call it, we'll prove it different, is relatively compact, yes, compact, that, that's the way, sorry, sorry, compact, that means for every sequence, for every sequence, and here we have here like this Vn, which is contained in Bf star, there, exists a subsequence and we put it like this V and K such that T star and I put here V and K converges that means it's relatively correct. That means you take any sequence in the in the in the image, that means here. So this will be the sequence which we denote by T, because that's a star of Vn, and we need to show it contains a convergence subsequence. So that's that's what we need to 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 to, to, to prove. So let's say the proof is uh, not difficult, so let's say notice. that if I denote by x exactly the closure of the ball, of the unit ball, in the space f, by assumption that t is compact, is a compact set. Is a compact set. Then, Then we can define, let's say, let's say like this, then we put, okay, maybe I should say like this, compact set. We can consider the space, and I put here like this, H, call this space H, and this will be space of continuous function from X R. So I need to show that the so so I need to show that H is relatively uh, so sorry 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 that that in this space maybe let's say like this no 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 we can consider this space maybe let's say like this, this space C X and I put here R and defined the set this set H now now it's correct now H of all functions phi belonging to C X R such that such that for every 
for every y belonging to k, uh, sorry, to x, so y for every x, we have here phi of phi of, uh, let's say like this, uh, of, of y is equal, hmm, put here like this, n, 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 and that will be equal to y, n, and I put here y, where n is equal 1 to infinity. So, one more time, you can see here, we have here the functions. Functions are x, so those are the, uh, this is a sequence, sequence that belongs to, to the unit ball. So on this space, so this is the unit ball, and remember that means phi n, let's write it down, phi n is the, is the functional from e to n, and the norm of this one is smaller or equal than 1. So this phi n can be considered as a function on x, on x. So I just simply say that those are the functions which are given by this particular sequence by this particular. So that means basically that H is a, is a sequence. Mm, okay, I should not write H. Maybe write it down just simply phi n. Uh, don't need the notation. Just say like this. This is a sequence. So we have here the sequence. Notice that, that these functions are definitely continuous, right? Because phi n, uh, this is E, f, 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 so on. Sorry, 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 sorry. F to R and Vn smaller or equal than 1. F. <coughs> so this is a sequence. This is H is a sequence. So H and define the set, a sequence, sequence. Sequence. So notice. that this sequence as a set, so just simply write it, notice that H is, first of all, bounded. It's bounded, it's clear, indeed, indeed. Take any function phi n, and apply it on y, so put it like this. Take absolute value, so what is this? This will be the same by the definition. This will be phi n by y. But y belongs to, y belongs to the key of b e. So what do I have here? I can say that, that y is equal t of x. You don't need to worry about this closure because the set itself, this set is dense in the closure. So if you show that this property is satisfied on a dense and a dense subset, then the function is indeed bounded. So we can look at that one and say that will be equal by the definition. This will be Vn, and then this one is, and I can put here Tx, Tx, and now. You go forward and say, okay, now I can do the following. This is smaller equal, this will be the norm of dn, and this will be tx. But that one is smaller equal than 1, so you are getting here that that one is just the norm of t times the norm of x. But the x was again in the unit ball, so this was in the unit ball, so that we are getting this is smaller equal than t. And that proves that indeed all the values of these functions are bounded, and they are also equicontinuous. B, the functions, the functions phi n are equicontinuous. And indeed, if we can check it, let's do it again. So we just write it down phi n of y minus phi n of y prime. Yeah, it's, uh, we can rewrite it again, the same thing. We have here y 
Do I need it? No, I don't need it. So that's exactly equal phi n, and this is y minus y prime. By above condition, you can see that this one will be smaller equal y vn, and that one is equal y minus y prime. So that one is smaller equal to y minus y prime. So you can have here that for every epsilon, sorry, for every epsilon larger than zero, there exists delta, which is exactly equal to epsilon, such that the condition C is satisfied. Satisfied. So indeed, there are the continuous, and as we, as we, this is C condition, and the condition B is not relevant because the space F, in this case, is the space of real numbers, so it's not, not needed. So now you can clearly see that, therefore, therefore by Arcella Scoli, by Arcella Scoli, phi n, the sequence phi n, phi n has a convergent subsequent subsequent has a convergent subsequence and that means simply that there exists kind of a limit belonging to CXR such that I can write it down supremum X belonging to x belonging to x, and I have here phi n of x minus phi of x, and that one is, that, that, so that is convergence, so that means for every epsilon larger than zero, there exists an n such that for n larger or equal to n is smaller than epsilon. And that means this is the limit. And now you look at that one and say, oh, limit means the sequence is convergent. So, so in particular, this phi and k and k, this is k, k. Phi and k is a Cauchy sequence. It's a Cauchy sequence. It's a Cauchy sequence. So let me write it down. What does it mean? That means supremum x belonging to x. And this will be, again, maybe I write it down. For every epsilon larger than 0, there exists an n such that for every k in m larger or equal to n, we have here k n k of x minus phi n l of x is smaller than epsilon, but that one is equal to supremum x belonging to x. And we know what is this? This is v and k, and that one is minus v n m, and that one is x, and that one is he, sorry, and I put here wrong thing. Wrong thing again. This is this is this is this is bothering me. I could not see it clearly. That should be y. We are using notation y because x is a subset subset of f, which is the range. And I'm using x just to emphasize connections to the to the Arcella Ascoli theorem. So I should be consistently using the value y, so that one will be equal to this value, and that one, you can say, this is, this was again, this will be again y, so I correct myself in red, you see this correction should be counted, so now you can say like that, what do I get here? I'm getting here that this is something that you can be written like this will be supremum and now we can put x belongs to the ball in e 
because you can write it down, this will be V N K minus V N M, and this will be T X. Go down, and here, this one is can be written as supremum X belonging to B. Can you read it? E. This is E. And that one is equal to T star V and K minus T star of V and N on X. Huh. But that one is nothing else than T X V N K minus T star V N N. And as you see, is smaller than epsilon, so we are getting here that, therefore, thus, this sequence, T star V N K, is Cauchy in E star, and consequently, converges. Yes, so that proves it. That means we found the convergence of sequence. Very good. Very good. So let's do a little conclusion. And this will be just simply showing that the, the next follows from the actually what you, we just proved it. So what do, we, what do we have here is basically the, the statement that if you know that if T star is compact, then, of course, T double star is compact, and that implies, and that implies that T double star of B, E, that one, closure is, maybe, maybe without closure, is relatively compact. Compact. And since T of B E is actually via via so can be identified with the J of T with the J of T of B E. Mm -hmm. and it is contained in T star of B E star. So if you have here a subset of a relatively compact set, it is also relatively compact, thus T B E is also relatively compact. relatively compact and that means that and that means we prove the, the statement. Let me see if I have some paper. Yeah I still have some paper. So let me maybe conclude with a small theory, let's say like a proposition proposition and let's say like this let E F B two Banach spaces and suppose that T is a compact operator between them ten if xn is weakly convergent to x, then this implies maybe like this 10 for every for every sequence sequence x n contained in E we have that if x if x n 
weekly converges to x, this will imply that Txn will strongly converge to x. Proof is very simple. Remember one thing that we have here that xn is weakly convergent, so if xn weakly converges to x, then this set, this set is bounded. But if this is bounded, that means it is xn is contained in the ball of radius r. I can just simply write that this is ball e. And that means that implies that t of xn is contained in the r, and this is ball of b. And since that one is relatively compact, since this one is relatively compact, so that implies that if you scale it, it's also relatively compact. Relatively compact. That is this implication. And therefore, so we have we have that. The sequence contains a convergent subsequence. There is a subsequence TXNK that goes to strongly to a certain Y. To a certain Y. So we are standing here. On the other hand, T is continuous. Thus, T is weakly continuous. So, we also have here that T X and K is convergent weakly to T of X. But, a sequence weakly if strong convergence implies weak convergence here we can say this implies also that t x k is also to y clearly so by uniqueness of the limit t x must be equal to y so we show that there exists a sequence now you can just simply argue by the contradiction. Suppose that the limit does not exist, that this y is not a limit, does not exist, so there exists a sequence, subsequence, which is not convergent to this limit, and you take this subsequence and then you can apply the argument in a circular way, that means come back, do the same thing as we did in the beginning, and you will get the contradiction. So, then, Therefore, okay, we have that actually the whole sequence must converge strongly to Tx. And that's enough for today. Thank you. I hope to finish it in the... Uh, that's not the end, actually. We, we need to prove uh, one more theorem and... Uh, about the compact operators before we we deliver some one main theorem and we will deliver the the, the definitions and properties of the Fredholm operators. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you.